Hi everyone, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company and thank you so much for tuning into one of our talks today. We are a year-round talk series bringing you the best creative voices across film, television, and theater. And today we're joined by the fantastic Jules Wilcox, who's currently starring in the Magnolia released Alone. And I was really interested in your involvement in this film and how you first stepped into it and the way that you prepared with the scripts because you know, it feels like a role that you would really want to take a lot of time to think about who this character is, the way that she's going to carry scenes, particularly because there's so many where she's the only person on screen at a time. But I heard that you actually got the role and stepped into it very close to production starting. So I was really interested in how that shifted your usual preparation process for a character and how you had to make a lot of very fast decisions in how you were going to portray her. Well, yeah, it's very true. We, I think I had maybe a week to prep and like get ready to fly from New York to Portland. And um, uh, I had worked with the director, John Himes, before in an episode of television. So that's, I think, how it all came together. And the, sh and the, the role that I played was very emotional and I had to just yeah. be able to play a range of things. And so when they were casting and they like funding sort of came together last minute, the crew came together last minute, and they're, you know, they're scrambling to get this cast together. And John was like, I know who can do it in, you know, a week's time. Because we'd, in this episode of TV, we had shot during the week other, you know, kind of more of the easy stuff. And then on yeah. Friday night, we were shooting all of my, like, heavy emotional scenes yeah. in a hospital bed. And it's, you know, just really gut-wrenching stuff. Yeah. And at, towards the end of the day, he comes up to me and he says, Jules, I am so sorry. This never happens, but we lost the footage. The footage is gone. Three separate scenes of just like really, really difficult, really difficult material. And we only have an hour to reshoot it. And that's including like setting up and doing, you know, moving, you know, into a different space and you know, getting different coverage. And we did it. And it was like one take each scene because everybody wanted to go home. It was a Friday night. So the pressure was on and it just, you know, I was with the character, I'd prepped that character and I could do it. So he needed somebody who could just like show up to set and be available. So I think there was a natural connection that I had just who I am as a person as an actor with this role, but, um, Beyond that, a lot of the, the preparation was, was talking with John and Mark Menchaca, who's the other actor in the film, just on our drives to set or any downtime that we had. That was when we were rehearsing, talking it out, getting to know each other, learning how to trust each other. And it just really happened on the fly. And luckily, everybody's um, <clears throat> chemistry, it was on. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about that on-screen relationship with Mark because um, what was so interesting about it was also that there could have been two very different ways that you worked together. One to kind of like really keep a distance from each other on set and to kind of make that distance and animosity almost a natural thing that existed to play into. Um, but it sounds like you actually worked very closely together and how you wanted to craft a lot of those scenes and developed an incredible trust with each other. And so what was that journey of really mapping that out and developing a lot of the nuances with each other? Because especially with the things that he's doing to your character on screen, you really had to trust him in a lot of those moments. Absolutely. I think there's this misconception that you have to be enemies behind the scenes if your enemies on camera. And for the intimacy of, of some of those scenes, mm -hmm. we really had to trust each other. I had to feel very safe in order to feel very scared, yeah. you know, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I, I think maybe a different actor would have been a different situation, but there was just the, the kind of the alchemy of us two coming together. I think we're, we're just warm people and we want to get to know each other and he's very fun and funny and so we just, buddied up right away and really took care of each other throughout the shooting because it's it's all challenging material and for him it's also john would talk about this it's it's not only jessica's worst day of her life but it's also the man's worst day of his life right if you think about it not the beginning but towards the end <laughs> yeah 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 what and that's the conflict right you've got two people just like fighting for their lives 
Mm -hmm. I also, one of the things that I love about your performance is even in the very early scenes where it's a lot of exposition and it's a lot of solo scenes, really just of you driving in a car, how much you manage to pull in the t into that performance and how we really understand where she's at emotionally, even though we don't know all the details of why yet. And so I wanted to ask you a little bit about how you specifically prepared for those scenes and, and how you kind of managed to achieve that ultimately. Well, I think we all know grief some version of it, right? And what John and I had done together before, there was there was an element of grief and loss in that. And so I guess since he knew that I could I could enter into a character that way, it and it was somewhat easy for me. All I needed needed were those circumstances, right? She's she's lost her the love of her life, you know and and tragically truly tragically and um i and also just imagining feeling so hurt and so broken that you can't even connect with your family mm -hmm. and that's to me I, i'm very close to my family so it's like well, okay what would it take what would it take to be so distraught or so broken and so confused that you can't like i just don't even want to talk to anybody i got to go i got to run that's that's what i connected with yeah. Did you do any research into the specific type of grief and loss that she's experiencing, or did you really just connect to it on that emotional level? Well, I've known people who have lost people tra in, in very tragic circumstances. Uh, personally, thank God, you know, I haven't. But um, I, I think just having empathy and, and being present with people who've been through that, that type of loss mm -hmm. definitely informed what I, I was doing and what I brought in. Yeah, and there's also, you know, beyond the moments that we see in the film, there's also almost a flashback sequence that mm -hmm. you have the opportunity to put together. How valuable of an asset was that for you oh, in terms of gosh. really just understanding and knowing a lot more of her backstory and bringing that into the performance for the present day? I'm so glad you said that because, you know, I, I would look back at the pictures. So Johnny, um, Johnny and I, Jonathan Rosenthal is one of the producers. He's also an actor. Um, he played my husband mm -hmm. in the flashbacks and in the photographs. So I got to know Johnny just through, you know, working together. And I think it was the first weekend that we took a whole day to just go like do couple pictures and go like grab a bite to eat and play, play ping pong. That was, I think that's how we connected. I was like, okay, like the, we're building this history yeah. together. And, and we took all these like silly photographs that you can see on my, on my phone. I still have them on my phone and, and they're in a file that are called to John, you know, that I sent to John Himes. And uh, during shooting, when I needed to co connect with that relationship, I would go to that folder and I would look at the, you know, happy times. And there's something so, you know, uh, bittersweet about looking at the happy times when you are, uh, when you're experiencing loss. So I, I knew who he was. I knew who he was to me in that, yeah. in that sense. So yeah, it's, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because I haven't, I haven't thought about that since we were shooting, but I would definitely call, call upon it. Yeah, and kind of, you know, similarly to the relationship on screen that you have with Mark and that behind the scenes rapport, I was interested in kind of the rapport that you had with John. And obviously you mentioned that the two of you worked together. So there was kind of a natural shorthand, but I imagine that this was a very different type of working environment in terms of the necessity of what you needed to do. You know, yeah. there weren't other cast members. You're really only ever opposite two other cast members on screen in the time that we see you. Mm -hmm. And so kind of what, what was the way in which he really created that space that was conducive to this and felt like a really safe space, particularly with things you were being asked to do on screen for this role? Mm -hmm. Well, seeing him working in TV, you see this dance. It's a choreography between so many people. It's a huge crew. It's a huge cast. And we would, but we would have these moments of coming together and talking about the character and talking about the scenes. And you often don't get that with TV, with directors. They, they're just too busy, but he really wanted to make sure and connect on, on the story and this character. And I knew that the way that he, with such proficiency, 
handled the, 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 the choreography of everyone else, but also could be, you know, connect one-on-one. -on -one. I, I knew that that would be so helpful going into the shooting of Alone. Mm -hmm. I read the script and was nervous, you know, that she has to go through a lot emotionally and especially physically. So I'd actually seen him work, working with the woman who um, uh, played my sister on the show, who was, I think, eight months pregnant at the time, doing some stunt work with her. And she's like, I want to do all the stunts. And he's like, you can't, you're eight months pregnant. She's like, no, I, and he's got two little girls. He's like, no, you cannot do all these stunts yourself. And she's like, no, I really want to do it. And, and she, he's like, oh, okay, we'll figure it out and we'll find a safe way to do it. And when I, I also saw him handling that with such grace and, and, and just so professionally. So again, we're going into this like extreme physical environment also with the emotional stuff. And I, and I knew he could handle it. I knew, I knew he I, we would be in such good hands with him. And then you add to, and I don't think I knew this yet about him, this, the visioning of what this film was going to be because he's he's editing it in his mind as he's shooting it so it's very lean even like we're not shooting anything extraneous it's all it's he knows exactly what he wants for the cut because he's also editing as you know the final product he's editing with his um his partner so it's he I, he's just brilliant on all the levels that he works he makes the crew feel amazing he makes it post like he's the king of post too so the fact that he's still on during production you're like wow how does he how does he do all of this <laughs> i also i love the way that you were just mentioning his previous work in terms of stunt and safety work because mm -hmm. i know that you actually injured yourself early on in the shoot and it's kind of astounding that he came to you and asked whether you wanted to continue filming because you know, on any set, but especially in indie where time is money and it's really difficult to stop production, that he gave you the decision as to whether you wanted to continue. And it sounds like you also continued to do a lot of stunt work in conjunction with your stunt double, even with that injury. And so I just wanted to ask you a little bit about kind of like how that really shifted from the original intention of how you were planning to film a lot of the stunts and what that collaborative relationship worked with, work, sorry, worked out to be like with your stunt double. Yeah. It I mean, it changed everything in so many ways. Um, just because physically, I'm I'm in a walking boot for three quarters of the film. <laughs> but we were able to write the injury in, and John, I he was so respectful of what I needed and what the production needed and how we could do this all together. Because there's a world in which we could have just said, okay, we're done. Insurance covers this week that we shot. Everybody gets their money back. Um, we just go home. And, uh, but he also, I think he knew how much we'd all given and I'd given to, uh, to imagine like recasting or um, stopping production. I, I don't think anybody really wanted to do that, but also they didn't want me to get more injured or, you know, put me in jeopardy. So being able to write it in and make it work, I think it, it also keeps people employed for another three and a half weeks, you know, that those are the kinds of things that were going on in my head. Like if we stop now, then like everybody, everybody goes home. And a lot of production had moved out of Oregon at the time, a couple of shows had just been canceled. And so I think everybody was just like, okay, we, we need work. So it, it was, in a way, kind of taking care of the whole village, mm -hmm. also like taking care of this character because you can't start a character like this and not stop it. I just can't imagine. And I'm so glad that we kept shooting. We, we were able to do some reshoots mm -hmm. in the summer after we shot. And that way, that's where you can see me actually physically running and um, standing up. But the majority of that film is cut you can just see like they cut off my feet because you're gonna see this walking boot that's got <laughs> camouflage tape all over it and like wood and, and leaves taped to it <laughs> i think that's kind of an easter egg for people if they can see a camouflage walking boot i doubt they will i don't i don't think it's in there at all but they, they did a really good job of 
uh, cutting it out. Yeah, I also wanted to ask you a little bit about the camera work in the film because there's so many moments where there's a lot of extreme close-ups and there's really nowhere for your performance to hide and it also doesn't feel like that was just another part of coverage. It feels like that was the intention and the specific choice going into it. And so I was really interested in kind of how that draws out a different type of performance from you and the, and the types of choices that it led you to make for a lot of those scenes. Mm -hmm. well, it's a lot of, it's intimacy with the camera. Right, really letting the camera see you, and and a lot of that is just you personally as an actor op opening up to it and just breathing and being in the scene. And it's, you're not playing the camera necessarily, but it is another character there. Um, uh, Fetty Federico Verardi, who is our amazing cinematographer, who's also worked with John before many times he he did a lot of steady cam and he was just it, it would, often it was just like the two of us and sometimes John would be in there too and so it felt very intimate it does feel like another character in a way and the like we had to create intimacy between um and and just connection between Mark and me we, we also had to have that with camera. We also had to have that with Fetty. And Fetty was just always just like right there. He's just the sweetest guy, very quiet, you know. He's just like, he's like, okay, I'm right here. I'm right with you. And you know, we're going through hell together because he's in the Whitewater Rapids. He's, uh, you know, we're being like poured on um, by, you know, fake rain or real rain. <laughs> so many times it was just real rain. So yeah, we, we there's something about just trusting that he's gonna see it and also just being open and, uh, and, and allowing the camera in. That's all, I can, it's hard to describe. It's just hard to describe, but it's, it's definitely, it's, it's a lot of um, uh, surrender. Surrender to the elements and surrender to the camera. Mm -hmm. And there's also a really unique challenge for a lot of the scenes that you're doing. You know, we were talking a little bit earlier about how you're in a lot of scenes by yourself and, you know, so much is often feeding off of your scene partner and really using their energy to find the beats within mm -hmm. a performance. So how were, you know, how is that a different challenge for you on this film, having so many of those scenes? Because it's not just once or twice, it's several moments throughout. Well, even if, if, even if Mark's not there, even if the man isn't there, the threat of the man is there, mm -hmm. right? So you really, you are playing against somebody and, and, and you're, you're playing against a clock too. At a certain time, you know, if there's, I'm shot. Well, sorry, I'm giving things away, but like <laughs> you're, you're going to bleed out or you're going to get gangrene or you're going to get, you know, you're running out of time. And so I think there's, there's this urgency that you're playing with. There's, um, so much of it is, is imagination work, right? But it's also, you're, you're in the elements. So you're, you're playing against that. You, there's, always, there's always a conflict. It's either between me and the man or it's me and nature. That's it. It's, and you're all co constantly fighting one of those things. Yeah, I also wanted to talk a little bit about that kind of one of those very early scenes when the man kind of like first approaches her car because you know, it was such a relatable moment, I think, to any woman watching that. We've all had that moment where we just intrinsically feel something in our gut that we just don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. And I was just interested in the way that in that and several scenes following in their first encounters, how you really just pulled a lot of that really relatable experience into those moments and managed to capture it so wholeheartedly. Well, I think because I've had so many of those experiences, right? So... And every, every, each time we run into them, it has to build. So it has to be, everything has to be specific. It can't be the same sort of fear, right? So what is it, you know, I think we don't trust that instinct at first sometimes. So there, that was at play in the very beginning. And, mm -hmm. and we're, I think we were shooting right towards the beginning of, of the Me Too movement starting and that was part of the conversation with John as well. It's like, where, where are we programmed? Where's like pa patriarchally programmed for us to be like, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I feel uncomfortable, you know? <laughs> um, and apologizing almost for, 
for 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 trusting your own instincts. So I think we kind of we started there and ratcheted up from there. And you know, calling upon every weird experience that you've had where somebody like talks too close or doesn't respect your space, um, that that was a big that was a big thing that we played with early on because you can feel that you can feel Mark's body kind of coming in and, and taking over her space several times or taking over her car. And she's already vulnerable because she's in that really old Volvo with a trailer attached to it. If you've ever driven one of those, it's very hard. So yeah, it's, 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 I think we just, yeah, we've all had those experiences. So it was mostly calling upon that, but also like that's, that's Mark too, kind of all of a sudden, you know, he's jolly, like lovely, wonderful Mark. And then he becomes the man and you're like, oh my God, you're terrifying. So it's often just playing against him as well. Yeah. And one of the things that you do so wonderfully is, you know, it's really, it really feels like this exploration of the fight or flight intrinsic nature that we all have, but it feels like every single one of the choices that she makes feels like a believable scenario as to how you would potentially react in those situations. And I was just really interested in kind of like how you really thought about what her emotional state was going to be at each, each stage so that you could make those choices to, as to like what, not just like what her response was going to be from the script, but emotionally where she was going to be and how she was going to respond to all of them. Yeah, that was a, a lot of conversations with John around that because we shot in sequence, which is very helpful. Mm -hmm. So you you can you can map it a little bit easier. I think when we shoot out of sequence, like I'm often having to like get the post-it notes and being like, okay, so yeah. she's at an eleven here, so that means she needs to be at a six here, and. Uh, it, 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 with this, because we had we had the journey really just set out right in front of us, um, it, it was it was easier. So you know, like okay, so she's still in the grief mm -hmm. situation here, and and the film really is a m metaphor for grief. Mm -hmm. Each of those um, the markers for like the river and the the clearing and all all of those are. We, they put that in later, but we always were talking about how is this tied into the grief that she's experiencing and trying to push through. So when the grief is so heavy there in the beginning, it's, it's, she's a little bit more clouded. And so her instincts are, they're there, but it just takes a little bit longer. And by the end, her instincts are, she's so in her survival state, her, the instincts are sort of like, <laughs> and she thinks of things that, you never know what you're gonna do unless you're in that moment. But um, I think she she just gets sharper as the the, the film goes on. She's also a, she's a woman who's you know older and has been through life, and she can she trusts herself ultimately to 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 do the right thing and 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 do what she what she has to to survive. Yeah, given the intensity of this character and the spaces that you needed to be able to tap into and really go emotionally on a day to day basis and the fact that it was also a very fast shoot in about the space of a month. Did you find it to be valuable to kind of stay within the character to agree to, to a degree at the end of the day and like take some of that home with you so that you could still capture it in the same space the next day? Or did you find that it was a necessity to really separate at the end of the day and really separate the time when you were filming from when you weren't? There's definitely like over the the course of the shoot, there was an energy that was of Jessica and the the fear state and their survival state, right? So, and the fact that I was injured so early, I was definitely living in it, which meant that I did have to check out a little bit, right? So I get home and just okay, I got to take a bath, I got to relax. It's not going to go away completely during this whole shoot. You know, go have dinner, go, you know, just call a friend, but you're still having to get up the next morning at four o'clock or whatever and, and be right in it and be in terror for, you know, 10 to 12 hours. <laughs> so I, the, most of the time I, I, I would try to have fun and relax in between takes or in between setups, but it's definitely, it's always there. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's one thing that was so great about the camaraderie on set was that we would make each other laugh so hard 
because we needed it. <laughs> John, John and, and Mark just have such a great sense of humor and great laughs that it's just, it was contagious. So yeah, it would never go away completely. And I definitely like had to take the holidays after shooting to just really kind of just let it all go. Yeah. And then I also kind of wanted to dive in a little bit to the scene where she's first taken in her car, where there's mm -hmm. that physical altercation, because one of the things I thought was so interesting about the way that that was filmed and the choices that John made were you're not actually seeing the action on screen. It's almost taking place in the shadows, but it's yeah. really necessary to have very clear action moments within uh -huh. that. And yeah. so I wanted to kind of ask you a little bit about the choreography of how that scene came together. John is so good about giving you just the right information, just enough, not too much, never too much. It's just enough, but it has to be specific. It has to be, we have to, you know, we have to see the injection, right? You know, we have to see um, the thing that knocks her out or the, the moment where we go back and we're like, oh, that's how her tire got slashed. It's very, very specific moments. Mm -hmm. And it, he clearly communicates it to us as actors as well. It's also in the script, but, but he really minds it and gets, it, gets really dialed in on what is, you know, goes from A to B to C to D. And, you know, it, 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 we don't miss a step, but it's, it's just enough. Um, and anything extraneous, again, like that's just, like you, there's no time we've we've got four weeks to shoot so we're just gonna get all the bare bones specific information in there yeah and also kind of looking back on the, the whole experience of filming this overall i think especially because it seems like every single scene was probably so challenging in completely different ways is there a specific scene that really stands out to you as what was the most challenging scene and you had the most obstacles to cut, overcome in order to film it Mm, that's a really good question. Uh, that car scene is very specific mm -hmm. uh, in, in that we, we did have to hit all those, those marks. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that would be that. Um, I, think, I think there's like an emotional journey that happens in the scene with Tony. Mm -hmm. um, where Mark is coming in. It's the only time that there are three characters mm -hmm. on, on screen, right? So Tony needs to possibly think that I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. And Mark does such a good job of convincing you that I'm the one who's crazy, right? Yeah. And that also makes me need to be a little crazy, right? And wouldn't we all in that situation? Um, so I think, I think John calibrated those levels so well because suddenly Mark becomes very, very, very real, you know, because it has to be, he got to convince Tony, Tony's character, this, this is his sister. And that makes me like ratchets my intensity up, which then obviously makes me look crazy. So, um, I think acting wise, that was a fun moment to try to like get the levels right. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that answers your question, but that's just something that I, I remembered. And I now seeing it a couple of times, I'm like, oh, oh, okay. I, I like the way that he edited that and, and calibrated it. Yeah, no, it really does. And your performance in the film is so fantastic to watch, you know, with all of the choices that you make throughout the emotion that you portray. And, you know, congratulations on that. Thank you so much for taking time to talk with us about all of this. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure. And your questions were fantastic. It really gets me thinking. I could talk about the film all day long, but it just, it got me thinking about things in a, in a different way. So thank you.